Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. AMA supporting GoFly flight competition. ALPA highlights FAA study underscoring danger from unsafe UAS. And EU committee agrees to continent-wide drone regulations. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. A little outside our normal coverage responsibilities, nonetheless, we're intrigued by AMA's newest agreement. AMA has partnered with Boeing to support GoFly, an incentive competition that encourages innovators to create a safe and easy-to-use personal flying device. AMA is excited to partner with GoFly in support of this creative initiative, said Dave Mathewson, AMA Executive Director. AMA has always supported advancements in aviation technology, and we look forward to witnessing the success of the GoFly program. Throughout history, model aircraft have been used to make early assessments and determine whether a full-scale aircraft is acceptable for its intended mission. The AMA continues to support STEM programs that encourage partnership in aviation. The two-year, three-phase competition will challenge teams to design and build a safe, quiet, ultra-compact, near-VTOL personal flying device capable of flying 20 miles while carrying a single person. The challenge includes three prize levels. Phase 1 offers 10 prizes at $20,000 each, based on paper technical specifications. Phase 2 offers four prizes at $50,000 each, based on VTOL demonstration. And Phase 3 prizes are awarded at final fly-off for a total of $1.6 million. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Full Aero Drones is working with outdoorsman Bill Booth to demonstrate that drones equipped with the latest thermal imaging equipment can effectively spot and track pythons during their prime hunting time. Over 100,000 Burmese pythons infesting the Florida Everglades have decimated 90% of small wildlife. Python hunters finally have a tool to make hunting more efficient, bringing down the python numbers that are devastating Florida's Everglades, said Booth. This drone and thermal technology is light years ahead of shining a flashlight into the darkness and hoping for the best. Michigan's Unmanned Aircraft Systems Task Force released a report of recommendations it represented to Governor Rick Snyder and to the state legislator regarding UAS. The report presents a desire to have a regulatory environment which respects state and federal areas of authority, but also establishes Michigan as a welcoming location to test, develop, and deploy this technology. Graduate students at the University of Nevada in Reno spent the day before Thanksgiving getting hands-on experience flying UAS as a tool for research at the university's UAS testing field in South Reno. The students were led by Geology Department Professor Scott Tyler and Department Chair and Professor Wendy Calvin. Tyler teaches a class that explores how UAS can be used for remote sensing in hydrology and environmental science. The course is one module of six in a national virtual university course that also includes several other educational institutions. A research team from the Alliance for System Safety of UAS through Research Excellence released a report that concludes that drones that collide with large manned aircraft can cause more structural damage than birds of the same weight for a given impact speed. The FAA will use the research results to help develop operational and collision risk mitigation requirements for drones. Asher conducted its research with two different types of drones on two types of aircraft through computer modeling and physical validation testing. That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Following the release of an FAA directive study showing that UAS may damage aircraft more than bird strikes during collisions, 
Captain Tim Canole, president of the Airlines Pilots Association International, renewed the union's call for Congress to give the FAA the authority to regulate hobby drones. Mind you, the narrative it adopts is not altogether correct nor firmly verified and is obviously designed to appease the airline community. Canole claims that in 2012, Congress told the FAA it could not create or put into effect any new safety regulations for unmanned aircraft that are operated as models or as a hobby. Congress must change this law and allow the FAA to apply safety rules to all types of UAS operations. He continues, policy and regulations must require operators to understand how to fly UAS safely. Individuals who fly UAS for recreation must be required to keep the aircraft within sight so they know where it is located and where it is heading. In addition, authorities must possess the tools to identify and track UAS operators who don't conform to the rules so that authorities can protect air travelers and shippers. The drone regulatory attacks continue. The Transport Committee of the European Parliament has agreed to draft drone regulations that would make sweeping changes in how small unmanned aircraft are regulated on the continent. Under the agreement reached recently, drones that are classified as dangerous would have to be registered with the EU. A dangerous drone would be defined as one that could cause significant harm to people by impacting them or one that presents a risk to privacy, security, or the environment. More specifically, they would be aircraft that would have a kinetic energy of over 80 joules, calculated using their mass and maximum speed. The rules will be applied to both drones flown for commercial purposes and by hobbyists. Drone rules currently are set by individual countries in the EU. Karima Deli, chair of the European Parliament's Transport Committee, said that with the drone industry continuing to show rapid growth, a European regulatory framework will prevail. Lawmakers debated the regulations for about 10 hours before the deal was reached. They will have to be ratified by the full European Parliament. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.